Mr. Des, are you ready for us? Your, your mute. Hello, hello, hello. I am definitely ready. Let me go ahead and give you the proper introduction, okay? Yes, thank you. Awesome. Mr. Des, Desati? Desati. Desati. Yes. You see, I have to practice. <laughs> He's a diaspora leader, but not just any diaspora leader, an exceptional one. As I've gotten to know him more over the past couple of weeks, it's I've just I just continue, he, he continues to show me more, and I just continue to be impressed even more. Um, he's a two-time United States Air Force combat veteran. So thank you so much for your service. We honor you. And he has deployed, he deployed to Iraq um, during operations OEF, OIF in 2006 and 2008. During his service in the United States Air Force, he was, devo he was a devoted, um, devoted airman who served as security forces at Patrick Air Force Base. He is also a proud member of Veterans of Foreign War. Did I say that well? That's VFW. After his honorable service, he earned his BS degree with a 4.0 GPA. Upon graduating, he, he quickly transitioned to becoming a tech professional who has worked at top corporations such as Cisco Systems and Tiffany and & Company. Throughout his career, he has served clients to, which include Pfizer, TD Ameritrade, G, um, Group M, Barclays, and many others. Um, currently, as a full-time MBA candidate studying business analytics at Pace University, is due to graduate spring 2022, and he supports autism advocacy and is a member of New Jersey's um, Perform Care Family Leaders Committee. He advocates for children with special needs and single parents. Most of all, he's a proud father of two sons who passionately promotes community building within the diaspora. Wow, such an honor. And I gave you a big job today. Oh, I gave yeah. you a big job. Oh, I asked, <laughs> yes. What I asked him to do for us, we've spent five good days um, learning, growing, sharing, connecting. And I asked him to please, from his fresh eyes, from his perspective, just to give us a good, um, really overview of, of, of his takeaways and, and his experience over the last five days. So Mr. Des, this is show time for you. Please have the floor. Thank you so much, Toyn. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, a packed house of excitement, uh, electrifying uh, speakers and content. I am fully overwhelmed and I'm, I'm so excited to be here. Uh, I wish my sons could see me speak now so they could see how daddy's been busy and how I, I kept up all night just to be uh, fully excited to uh, bring uh, this announcement. Um, so I do, I do want to thank all attendees and um, everyone, you know, being in good health in COVID. Uh, we're in COVID right now. Um, so I just want to thank everyone for joining today. And Tony, thank you so much for having me once again. And so I'll get into what we've, we have, we've had um, pretty much a, a jam-packed week. And so uh, first and foremost, once again, thank you, Tony, for this incredible summit. Um, it's enhanced my vision of how to do business with Africa. Um, electrified by all our speakers, you know, I'm glad to recap what we all experienced over the past four days. So we started with uh, Doug McMillan. Um, for, you know, he's the uh, Walmart of uh, CEO, and uh, he explained how we could, uh, as decision makers, have an opportunity to usher in trade facilitation um, for Africa's competitiveness within the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Um, he believes that this opportunity is one that will lock, unlock Africa's massive economic potential. Um, that was great words from him, spoken uh, from himself. And then after, we heard from uh, His Excellency, um, Ambassador Ab Albert Manchanga. Please correct me if I'm wrong, Twain. I'm okay? <laughs> okay, great. And um, his Excellency Ambassador Albert Machanga resourcefully made insights on how COVID-19 disruptions throughout Africa would require an estimated $285 billion in recovery plans for financed by IMF, um, International Monetary Fund, between now and 2025. Her Excellency Ambassador Hilda Suka 
most my please help me uh Tony I'm, yeah. <laughs> she's gonna say me have me go my uh my five dudes I, yes I'll, I'll try that and then uh he she co-signed remarks um complimenting his actually uh his his excellency in the expansion of manufacturing and agro processing to supply a market of 1.3 billion in in Africa. Um, therefore, uh, through the African Free Trade Agreement, Africa will soon impact global trade internationally. Exporting through partnerships such as AGWA, the African Growth and Opportunity Act will boost economically to meet Africans after the African Union's 2063 agenda. I am pleased to acknowledge in 2015, Africa, um, oh, excuse me, uh, Congress has extended AGWA until 2025 as per the Office of the United States Trade Representative. Upon closing, hit, um, he, um, His Excellency, collectively emphasized investing innovation, entrepreneurship, economic integration, economic policies and research as key factors for Africa to compete in global markets. After His Excellency, we had Sam Ananda. Mr. Ananda emphasized taking action in trade opportunities with China. He mentioned how advantageous it would be for Africans to compete within the Chinese market. We do, we, we actually do not as, as, a, as Africans or as DS4 register entities overseas quite often, he mentioned. Um, it would be ideal that we do, um, but China is now allowing African entities to re register and do business in China to compete with China's over, to, uh, Chinese markets overseas. African and DS4 shall assist with, with accelerating this market growth by registering ent entities overseas. Mr. Sam later explained if we both, if both the, U, the AU and people in general were better educated, opportunities uh, could be accelerated to, uh, to move this, this trade agreement. Uh, more of a financial uh, remittance um, happens a lot more when Africans are doing business in Africa. In other words, money continues to flow through Africa. So the, it's kind of the concept of the, the flow of funds in, in economics. Next, we had the speaker, uh, Claire Alexander. She um, mentioned how she began her establishment with very little resources in South Africa, transitioning from, Scot from uh, Scotland. And now she actually does facilitations with the, Scot the Scottish government and uh, trade with Africa. She advocates for collaborating with people um, and support for the diaspora in Scotland, which I did not know about. Um, and I've been fa fairly um, informed. Um, then we had a, a really a great speaker, uh, Dylan Patty. He brought uh, uh, a great uh, dis a great dis dissecting aspect to uh, digital transformation um, and what it means for Africa. Um, he highlighted risk factors that I think that's important um, and to be cautious of the realities that Africa is going to actually face. However, Africa competes as has been known for its high risk profile. How it still has a, an, a huge economic uh, breakthrough with, within the manufacturing and agro uh, field, as well as retail, um, being that there will be big investments to create enormous impact within the global economy. And that's all in day one. So I just thought that was just all day one. <laughs> um, and yeah, let's all uh, take a quick breath. Um, next, day two. We welcome uh, Mr. Fanjoy, Bill Fanjoy. We heard uh, from him as the managing director for domestic commercial engagement for Prosper Africa. Mr. Fanjoy shared infinite resources regarding the U.S. government um, in, initial in initializing to promote trade and investment between United States and Africa. Objectives for Prosper Africa are primarily to export to Africa, invest in Africa, export to America invest in the US and secure US investment. So key tools for the Prosper Africa are primarily US, US TDA feasibility studies, uh, US AID, 
technical assistance and XM financing. Lastly, he finished by stating that Prosper Africa focus on, focuses on diaspora and that we understand the culture. Diaspora understands relationships. And he encourages to sustain, and they and they are encouraged, excuse me, to uh, sustain business relationships. Not and not to forget that seventy percent of the companies that bid for contracts in the U.S. win those contracts. Enormous. That was, you know, right. So um, next we have Scott Ford, um, a very uh, highlight part of the segment where it was just a direct conversation between you, Toyin, and Scott Ford. Um, very nice, candid conversation. Um, he brought in conversation about high insights on business that compromise, uh, comprise of how, excuse me, how uh, to be excellent at commercial scaling, um, to, to scale business um, on a commercial level. Um, he insisted that products must be better in pricing and in servicing. He also spoke to the audience about having it all and losing it all and, and the factor of being able to sacrifice. He granted the audience words of wisdom with his defining partnership and mentorship quotes, whereby partnership is who you do life with and mentorship is who you're connected to and transparent with to be guided. So he left with those words and he's, he's definitely uh, making waves with uh, his coffee brand globally and, and is set to be the number one coffee producer out of you know, several countries in Africa. Um, so that was great and that's day two. I'm gonna be getting a bit more condensed as we go through day three and four and today. Um, so forgive me, it's been a, it's been a water hose <laughs> to, <laughs> through a straw. <laughs> so um, on day three, we had um, Koma, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Suwu highlighted uh, about the African free trade agreement um, and what it means to the diaspora. Um, he outlined top sectors um, to include transportation, energy, chemical products, textile, wood, and paper, and agro tech. Um, service industries included digital services, infrastructure and logistics, finance, education, health, and massive opportunities in the mining sector. He stated that big data shows that Africa's intra-trades are not maximized currently. Africa ideally imports more than it exports. However, this will change here in the near future and in, and in the years to come. And I, I would definitely tie that back to uh, His Excellency with that to, you know, that, that big number, everyone I'm sure that remembers that. Um, and so we also had Mr. John Rosenberg. Mr. Rosenberg um, educated us about decision makers in the United States who are in, empowered to influence how trade is facilitated between the US and Africa. For example, Samantha Power is an administrator of the USAID. I had the pleasure of doing some research on her and learned about her background where she actually had her days beginning in Harvard. And uh, she also did act, uh, Ms. Moore. And um, she is now the administrator of one of the largest departments in charge of facilitating trade with Africa. So um, that was a really great focal point and, and being, under, uh, being aware of what is happening in the States and who is actually helping to facilitate what happens in Africa. That's a that's a wrap up of oh, excuse me and of course uh, Professor uh, Belly, yes um, you also had a, a, a you know a, a, an incredible moment when you uh, explained uh, the cultural differences between Africans and Americans to synchronize um, to help Africa prosper. Uh, you have a book entitled Africans Africans and Americans Embracing Cultural Differences. Um, you are very keen on having us as readers to invest our times in understanding how imbalances in cultures requires cultural awareness. That is something that I've been kind of studying in this MBA program, which is uh, a, a, an incredible topic. I uh, did follow offline with others who found that topic interesting. And to myself, I thank you for your efforts. Going into day four, which was yesterday, um, we had Dr. 
Adenye, uh, Osam Miluyi, uh, bringing a lot of tech and flow throughout the medical systems in Africa while he's based out of Nigeria. He's very knowledgeable about the healthcare industry and the affordability in Africa at this point. He explained that there has to be a lot of techno, well, there has been a lot of technology adopted around the education space and that there are current partnerships with COVID as, as well as NGOs. And he also mentioned that off, Africa oftentimes seems like a laboratory. Um, whereby Africa should ideally produce their own drugs locally. Um, and I, I think that would change a lot of things within the country on the land. Um, but there are still many uh, complications and these things have uh, a timetable to be worked out. Hopefully with this fair trade agreement, things can actually sort themselves out. Next, uh, we, met, we, we met in uh, an incredible speaker, Dr. Nimrod Israeli. Um, he captured the essence of uh, biosecurity within agrotech, and he pioneered a way for fruits to be free of, chemi uh, free of chemical and harvesting at the best taste. Um, I think I, I learned a very easy lesson about how fruits are, are, are harvested, and uh, I think most of us uh, enjoyed it uh, thoroughly to the sweet of the mango. <laughs> um, he also emphasized how farmers need to be compensated in that mango is the largest produ producing fruit all throughout Africa. Um, exporting mangoes is a huge opportunity. Uh, he also Im implied that the tech technical know-how should be the model that Africa focuses on um, in order to be able to get the, the product, which is the mangoes out and export it. Um, there's three big models that you mentioned or big components that you mentioned rather is the winner's attitude, the breakthrough in science and the disruptive model. Next, we have speaker, Mr. Sean Gotkin and based out of South Africa, um, I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is that South Africa? Correct. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, he brought some great um, insights on business that's currently happening on the land in Africa. Um, and he presented great reports from uh, Hootsuite um, that showed that displayed the business activity with regard to the digital, the digital era um, and how apps are being downloaded and how business needs to be conducted well off your mobile devices. Um, he also explained how COVID and these times are cautioning questions or causing companies to question themselves if, if they should actually enforce a work from home policy. For this reason, this company has been able to profit and do well in this market where working from home may be our new norm. Um, so, so therefore, uh, Sean has been able to provide service to the Southern um, Sub-Saharan Af African uh, portion, a region with many companies um, to also include the uh, hospitality industry um, and uh, I'm sure there's more to hear from him um, when I can connect with him offline. Um, we did have a pretty packed movement kind of day yesterday. So I uh, just wanna kind of uh, transition to uh, Miss Joy, uh, the next speaker. Um, I'll say Joy, Miss Joy Zinn, okay, Zins. Um, she, um, definitely um, brought a lot of content around uh, strength in women uh, for the diaspora. Um, and how in, it's gonna currently impact uh, the continent. Um, she aims at um, empowerment, support, positive, reflecting the image, um, sharing information, connecting, networking, um, event coordinating, and, and a lot of mentorship that is currently happening on the land. Um, out uh, for the women um, and there's this trust and relationship building and collaborate collaborative efforts toward uh, respecting women. Um, and that really made an impact, I think, as far as the stance for women. Um, please, everyone bear with me. I know I'm like just condensing and squeezing all of the juice out of the last piece of the rack. Um, on day five today, we had a, a really uh, strong packed day as we are starting to wrap up. Um, we heard from a fellow New Yorker, uh, Ms. Moore. It was a pleasure to meet you. Uh, 
unofficially and now officially. Um, you, you know, your humble beginnings um, with your father and your mother, you explained um, how you grew up in the Christian environment. Um, you taught, uh, you were taught about your complexion and you explained about uh, being, uh, placing God first. Um, you mentioned attending an integrated school and actualizing your wealth um, through, through your wealth, your welfare status in your adulthood. Um, you also were, were taught about never quitting and um, but you did do one type of uh, quitting, which was your federal job, and actually that became <laughs> that became your best <laughs> your best move, um, which shifted your focus toward uh, uh, landing uh, your first acting role. Um, first time in history to see uh, um, a black family on TV. You may mention an honorable uh, success uh, path if that was that route, um, and your product and skincare line is doing incredible boundaries for black women. Um, thank you so much for your efforts. Um, we also had Big Bill, Mr. Bill McNamara, McNamara, McNamara. Okay, uh, he's out of Chicago, the International Trade Center. He brought a, a great uh, display of uh, information uh, whereby Chicago is supporting women and women owned business with 30 years of experience that he's seen. Um, and it's targeting, pro it's targeting programs for small exporters with special programs. Um, he's he's a, basically a community resource um, whereby the International Trade Center is to uh, help find you top markets, uh, the, the next pool for partners, and uh, how to get the general process started so that you can also take part of doing trade with Africa. And uh, a fun, enormous fact, fall, it's far small, but pretty ginormous, which is 80% uh, of US exporters have less than 20 employees. That was just incredible information for me to absorb. Uh, next, we had uh, Mr. Kyle Schultz. Kyle Schultz as the Executive Vice President of Business Development and Foreign Direct Investments of the World Business Chicago. He spoke of an incredible trade opportunities um, as well, such as Mr. Bill uh, within Chicago, building relationships and doing um, these things to help uh, improve the, the trade relations with uh, Africa. Uh, he mentioned how Av Chicago is currently advocating um, to do these, these exchanges to create new partnerships and, be and benefit Africa mutually. Um, it's very exciting, impactful, and uh, it's happening right now in a place that is very central to America. Lastly, uh, last but not, ne but not least, um, Ms. Olasumble, um, she spoke today um, based out of Lagos. Uh, I, I was thoroughly interested, would love to reach out um, and you making uh, your intentions of penetrating the American market through your own export of the shea butter product. Um, as a member of Nazaru, um, I'm proud to meet you um, unofficially and officially. And uh, it's just been a wonderful, um, platform to see that all these speakers have brought so much value to today's event. I am so thankful to have spoken, to have given a wrap up summary. Um, if I have left anyone short, I hope that uh, we can all just connect and be the best of friends. <laughs> Thank you so much, Toy, and this is a wrap. I am so pleased to be here. Oh, wow, such a fantastic job. See, everybody, please give him a, <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow, we're wrapping things up. I do want to share next steps, okay? I want to share next steps. And then um, those who need to go, right? But I want to give people opportunity to speak, to engage, to talk, but I don't want you to say Tony kept us longer, right? So I want to pull up um, a key message I want to share right now as we were wrapping up. Um, but then after my key message, I want to open up an opportunity for as many people that want to share comments, ask questions, and just engage as well.